This is the core of what really happened at Grow Island. It uh, was the rejection of the rigid conventional classroom. It doesn't look controversial now, but it was at the time because people were used to seeing classical symmetrical buildings. That shows the plan of the building. I always think of the Crow Island School as being like a city. There's a kind of campanile out in front, which is the chimney. The civic element that marks the entrance to the school. And a little plaza, and you come in. That's the town square, and then behind that are all the classrooms, which are like little houses. Each with its own individual courtyard. It's now considered a national historic landmark. The design of Crow Island School influenced the entire industry. Larry Perkins' approach to to deeply consider human occupants resulted in innovative architecture. Learning about how schools work was what Larry Perkins did. And he did that by sitting in a classroom. The principal activity was sitting in classrooms, watching and plotting the kids' actions. This is unique, I think, even to this day, is the whole idea of L-shaped classroom. There are different areas for different activities. And the L then creates this outdoor courtyard. Those early Perkins World Schools, they were sort of ingenious and bold. Yeah, yeah, they've kept it up wonderfully. People keep going back to saying, we want to think that way. It's like a drawing that's Some things are quite a bit different 75 years later. <laughs> but thinking of buildings from the inside out and designing buildings for, uh, for people is a principle that remains.